Hi guys, in today's video we're going to have a look at what is relativity, why do we compare to carbon-12, relative isotopic mass, relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass and relative formula mass, and exam style questions and finally a summary. So what is relativity? Well atoms are very small. They're about 10 to the minus 8 centimetres big. Just to put that into proportion for you, if every atom in an apple was the size of an apple, the apple itself would be the size of the earth. So you can see there how small atoms really are. Now mass is therefore given in relative terms, so we don't have to work with such small numbers. It's given relative to the carbon-12 isotope. This is an international standard. Let's take a closer look at why it is that the carbon-12 isotope is used. Well, comparing to the carbon-12 is an international standard, as I mentioned. Atomic mass is measured in a unit called the Unified Atomic Mass Unit, or U. Carbon-12 is given a mass of 12U, which means that 1 12th of carbon-12 has a mass of 1U, where 1U weighs approximately 1.6605402110 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So you can see what we're working with is very, very, very small quantities of mass here. So let's begin by looking at relative isotopic mass. The definition of relative isotopic mass is the mass of an atom of an isotope compared with one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. For an isotope, it's the same as its mass number. So looking at this example over here, we have chlorine with its two stable isotopes, which we've met before in our video on isotopes. We have chlorine with a mass number of 35 and chlorine with a mass number of 37. So the relative isotopic mass of our chlorine with a mass number of 35 will be 35. And the relative isotopic mass of our chlorine with a mass number of 37 will be 37. It really is as straightforward as that. So let's have a look at another type of atomic mass. This is relative atomic mass. The definition of relative atomic mass is the weighted mean mass of an atom of an element compared with 1 12th the mass of an atom of carbon-12. And we use AR to represent this. Now, relative atomic mass is really quite useful, and that's because it takes into account the fact that many elements are a mixture of isotopes. So if we go back to that example of our chlorine, we said chlorine has two stable isotopes, so it exists as both chlorine-35 and chlorine-37 in nature. About 75.77% of it is chlorine-35, and the other 24.23% is chlorine-37. So we can work out what the relative atomic mass will be. We do that by multiplying the mass number of the isotope by its percentage abundance. We do that for both isotopes. So you can see we have 75.77% multiplied by 35. We add to that 24.23% multiplied by the 37. We divide by 100. And that gives us 35.49. If you have a look in your periodic tables, the mass number of chlorine is given as between 35.45 and 35.5, depending on how it's rounded. This explains why it's not a whole number. So now let's move on to the slightly different concept of relative molecular mass. Some compounds and elements are composed of simple molecules, such as oxygen and nitrogen, which are diatomic. They exist as two oxygens bound together or two nitrogens bound together. And we use MR to represent our molecular mass. So again, if we have a look at that example of chlorine, chlorine is a gas and is also diatomic. We have two chlorine atoms that move around together, they're bound together. So Cl2 is composed of two chlorine atoms. The mass number of one chlorine atom is 35.45. Therefore, the mass number of Cl2, that's two chlorine atoms, will be 35.45 times two, which is 70.9. The final idea we're going to have a look at is relative formula mass. This is similar to molecular mass. And it's applied to ionic compounds. In ionic compounds, we have repetitive formula units. To calculate relative formula mass, the relative atomic mass of each formula unit is calculated. So for example, if we had sodium chloride, that's composed of hundreds of formula units of sodium and chlorine. 
In order to work out the relative formula mass, we'd work out the relative atomic mass of just one of those units. So a formula unit of sodium chloride is composed of sodium and chlorine, where sodium has a relative atomic mass of 23 and chlorine of 35.45. If we add those together, we can see that the relative formula mass of sodium chloride will be 58.45. So just to summarise everything that we've talked through today, I've included this table which summarises the different types of atomic masses. We have our relative isotopic mass that we apply to isotopes. We see we have our two isotopes of chlorine here, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, with their relative isotopic masses of 35 and 37 respectively. We have relative atomic mass that takes into consideration the fact that some elements exist as different isotopes. We have relative molecular mass, which takes into consideration the fact that some elements exist as compounds or molecules, and relative formula mass, which we apply to ionic compounds. Question 1 is a multiple choice question. It asks us what is the relative formula mass of Na3PO4, also known as trisodium phosphate. So if we go ahead and have a look at a periodic table, we can find out the mass of our sodium, phosphorus and oxygen. Here we have our periodic table. We have found our sodium, phosphorus and oxygen. And we can see that sodium has a mass number of 23, phosphorus 31 and oxygen 16. So if we go ahead and write that down. So from our formula, we can see we're going to need to multiply the sodium by 3. So that gives us 69. We only have one atom of phosphorus, that's 31. So times 1 gives us 31 for completion. We have four oxygens, so that's times 4 to give us 64. We can then work out the total of this, which would be 69 plus 31 plus 64 giving us a total of 164, and we can therefore see that the correct answer is C. And we get one mark for that multiple choice question. So moving on to question two. For three marks, we're asked to give the meaning of relative atomic mass. So your definition should be something that you know very well, and you should be able to regurgitate these very quickly, but also to understand what they're saying. So we know the definition of relative atomic mass to be the weighted mean mass of an atom compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. So I've gone ahead and written down our definition. So where do our three marks come from? The first comes from stating it's the weighted mean mass of an atom. The second from explaining it's compared to 1 12th of the mass of something. And the third from defining that it's 1 12th of the mass of carbon 12. So we have all of our three marks. So let's go ahead and move on to question three. Question three asks us to use the information in the table below to calculate the relative atomic mass of a sample of rubidium. And we have two isotopes of rubidium. Now you should be familiar with this type of calculation. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to take our first isotope, that's the isotope with a mass number of 85, and we're going to multiply the relative isotopic mass by the percentage abundance. So that would be 85.00 multiplied by 72.15. We will add to that our second isotope, doing exactly the same thing. So that's 87.00 multiplied by 27.85. We'll divide that through by 100. That gives us 8555.7 over 100, which gives us 85.557. And we get one mark for the correct final answer and one for the correct calculation. So if we move on to the fourth and final question, on the periodic table, the mass number of magnesium is given as 24.31. Why is this not an integer? So this two mark question is asking us about the mass number of magnesium, which if we have a look on the periodic table, is indeed given as 24.31, not as an integer. Now we know that the mass number on the periodic table is the relative isotopic mass.
and two or more different isotopes of magnesium will contribute to this mass number. And that's why it's given as this number rather than an integer. So let's go ahead and write that down as our answer. I've gone ahead and written down exactly what we explained, that the mass number on the periodic table is the relative isotopic mass, getting us our first mark. And that two or more isotopes of magnesium in this case contribute to this mass number, getting us our second mark. This can be applied to a number of different elements throughout our periodic table, so it's important to have an understanding of why the mass number is not given as an integer, and what our relative isotopic mass, our relative atomic mass is, and the definitions of all these different terms. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.